right. It's Monday, <laughs> but we still have some football friends for you, plus more. Yeah, Monday, but hey, can't complain about football on a Monday night. You cannot. All right. Well, we got some big games tonight, and we start with Mandan versus Legacy. And this was an absolute track meet over at the Community Bowl. Legacy trails 22 to 11 in the second quarter, and Rick Clements, he decides to keep the ball after looking for a pass. As he heads to the corner, he's airborne. The official said Clements was in for the score, but Legacy still trails 22-18. On man then next possession. The Braves are facing third and short. The man is just going to hand it off, but Will Klein Connect turns it to a third and touchdown. Man then goes up 30 to 18. And now with under two minutes left in the half, Clements will use the arm this time. And that's a beautiful pass to Brady Bergman for the score. Mandan hangs 50 on Legacy. They win 50 to 32. So Mandan looking pretty good this season so far. They are. And now we have another game with playoff implications. That is Bismarck and Minot. Mike Elm is in Minot with more. Mike. All right, thanks, Joey, and thanks, Phil. The state's high school version of Monday Night Football also included the Monaheim Magicians and Bismarck Demons. Now, the game was postponed from last Thursday, and both teams looking to stay very much in the playoff picture with a win, and for the Demons, still a chance to catch Century, who they'll play in the final game of the regular season. So let's go back to the Bismarck Community Bowl. This was the nightcap there. Midway through the second quarter, Monaheim trailing 10-7, and Jackson Gunville finds Talon Hebert for a nice completion and the first out here. Now Minot is an inch away from taking the lead, and guess what? Gunville on the quarterback sneak, he takes it over, and Minot takes a 14 to 10 lead. So Bismarck looking to respond, and look at this power running from Isaiah Hughes. He breaks through a tackle in the secondary, and he would take the ball down to the one yard line, and then he would punch it in a couple of plays later. Bismarck goes on to get the win over Minot High, 35 to 17. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike. So Bismarck improves to four and one in the WDA. Well, now let's go to Class AA, St. Mary's in Watford City, and we're going to pick this one up with St. Mary's enjoying a running clock as the Saints led 42 to seven in the fourth. But Watford still still playing defense, and as the quarterback tries to keep the ball, they drop him for a loss later in the drive. This is going to be fourth and four at St. Mary's. They're going to hand off the ball to Isaac Vandal, and he has enough to move the change. And then later, it's Vandal again. Going to have a nice run. And another first down from this one. St. Mary's, they take the knee shortly after that. Feels good after getting a win there, 42-7, after that tough Beulah game a few weeks ago. Yeah, so St. Mary's not even on the season. We had another game between Beulah and Turtle Mountain. And we send it back to Mike Elm, the talented Mike Elm back in Minot. Mike, what do you have? All right, in view of the Miners also finally hitting the field after a three-day delay as they hosted Turtle Mountain. Now, a Miners win would secure a playoff spot while the upcoming Braves were looking to play the role of spoilers. So let's go to this one. We'll pick it up starting midway through the third quarter. Beulah is leading this one 23-8. And Turtle Mountain quarterback Kaysen Peltier connects with the wrong team. That's Beulah's Nathan Batest stepping in front of that one. And he returns it 55 yards to the house for the Miners. And that put Beulah up 29-8. The next possession for Beulah on offense was a quick one. Quarterback Trey Brandt here, and he takes the deep shot. And guess who? Batest again, this time on a long touchdown reception. Starting to see a little bit of a trend here with Batest. Now in the fourth quarter, it looked like Turtle Mountain was gaining some ground until the receiver is hit here and fumbles near the Beulah 30-yard line. Beulah recovers. Turtle Mountain would attempt to come back in the fourth quarter, but they fall short. Beulah goes on to win it 43-32. excuse me, to 32. All right, thank you, Mike. As we go to Class A, is Shallow Christian looking to rebound after suffering their first loss of the season last week. And tonight, they were at home against Hart River. And we have no score late in the first quarter of this one. And we're going to see Cole Wall. He's a captain. He takes the handoff on the mixed direction, and he picks up a big game. That gets into Hart River's territory. Later, this will look like the exact same play but it's to the other side. It's Trey Brunel, who knocks over a defender and takes the ball down to the one-yard line. I really thought he scored on this play. But then I had to hustle down to the end zone because Shallow would go up 7 to nothing. But Hart River had a response. This was a big run for 
Garrett White. That drive led to a touchdown, but Shiloh will pull away from there. A big win tonight for the Skyhawks, 53-12. to Good to hear you hustle there. We're going to hustle up to Washburn. <laughs> New Salem, all my Glenn Allen taking on, keep on pace with the Shiloh Christian Skyhawks. Holstein's with the ball, going to rumble with the pump fake and the shotgun. Goes deep, connects with Taden Sorpier. With three defenders on him. Later in the drive, Rembolt scrambling back, looking for a short crossing route to Dawson Zuroff. But look at the tackle by Hunter Clidworth. Preventing the first down. Rough Riders take over, but just as that happens, Dylan Williams looking down the middle, but picked off Grant Gerving. That would lead to a Holstein's touchdown a few plays later in New Salem. Gets the win 48 to 14. All right, and we're going to.